Music is a huge part of video games. There's a reason I talk about music in literally every game review I do, after all. And I gotta say that video game music is a huge part of my life. I've got an entire playlist with only covers of video game music that I listen to on a regular basis, and it's incredible. I've also already done one video on this subject, which you should totally go check out, but I hope that this video helps you find games that you may want to try or just fill up that playlist a bit. Every song playing will be labeled in the description below and marked on the timeline, so without further ado, let's get started. While the list itself is in no particular order, let's start with the one that everyone expects. It's Project Moon. All of it. Lobotomy Corporation, Library of Ruina, and Olympus Company all have incredible tracks. I've done videos on all these already, so I don't want to spend too long talking about any of them, but let me throw some suggestions at you that you can pop open a few YouTube tabs to watch later. Second Warning from Lobotomy Corporation, String Theocracy from Library of Ruina, and In Hell We Live from Limbus Company are all absolutely incredible and invoke three very different emotions. These games definitely aren't for everyone, but you should at least listen to these absolute bangers. Again, I've already talked extensively on these games, I just had to make sure that music is heard. So on to the next one. I have also already made a video on Pizza Tower, but this one just needs to be out there again. The entire soundtrack is on Spotify right now, but if it's not your style, there's also an artist called Rashad EB on Spotify that does some insane guitar covers of the soundtrack as well, and they're really good. He also did a cover of Bad Apple they should totally listen to, but back to the actual songs themselves. Pizza Tower is full of insanely fast, high-energy tracks that all make you want to drive 90 in a school zone. I'm sorry, officer, I needed to hit that child to maintain my combo for a P rank. It's all incredible and super cool, and you should go check out Pizza Time and The Death That I Deserve Ioli for some absolute bangers. With those two out of the way, we can finally talk about some games that I haven't done videos on, starting with Omega Strikers. I was going to do a video on this game, but I've been really sidetracked lately, so I probably won't get around to it. But regardless, I gotta talk about it here at the very least. Omega Strikers is a 3v3 air hockey MOBA, which sounds like an AI-generated phrase, but is actually super fun. It's like League of Legends without the racial slurs. It hosts a variety of really good character designs and an opening that was animated by Studio Trigger. Yeah, that Studio Trigger. It goes hard. While I think the game itself is more of a passing fad, I certainly had a good time with it, and the soundtrack is timeless. Particularly, I absolutely love the glitch pop theme of Amy, which you're listening to right now called The Girl Who Glitched, as well as the opening theme titled Go Strike, which just pops the fuck off. Amy is in the thumbnail for a reason. This game has some great songs, and if you love MOBAs but hate playing them, maybe you should go give the game a shot. Hades is a roguelike action game, which a lot of people know about. What's less common is the knowledge that this isn't the game's full title, which is actually Hades Nuts Fit in Your Mouth Ha Got em. It won Game of the Year at the Developer Choice Awards and absolutely should have won the Game Awards, but whatever, take your shitty zombie game and go inhale some spores. However, it was also nominated for Best Soundtrack and for Excellent Reason. It fucking rules. Not only is the game beautiful to look at, incredibly fun, and tells one of the most interesting stories I've ever experienced, 
The music is absolutely incredible. It uses a ton of instruments, from guitars to cellos, and even instruments that would have existed in ancient Greece, which is so fucking cool I can't explain it. The composer for this game describes the genre as, quote, Mediterranean prog rock Halloween, which is a series of words I would have expected to come out of the mouth of my senile grandfather, and yet it perfectly summarizes the feel of the tracks. I'm not going to recommend a specific track from Hades because you should listen to all of them. Hades 2 was also recently announced, and I'm unbelievably excited for it, partially because I get to hear more of the music, so if you haven't played the game yet, please go give it a shot. It rules. Dave the Diver is an interesting little game that I really like. It revolves around your friendly neighborhood diver, Dave, going to catch some fish and bring them back to a restaurant to serve sushi. It's a super peaceful game, and while it can get pretty intense, it's really relaxing for the most part. The gameplay loop is balanced incredibly well, and more importantly for this video, the soundtrack is great. It's a bit more in the spirit of lo-fi, with some beautiful rising notes, and at least in my opinion, is great to relax slash study to. It makes exploring the ocean feel so light-hearted, even if you're absolutely terrified of the briny depths like I am. While the game isn't finished right now, it's got enough content to keep you entertained for quite a while, and regular updates are coming constantly. I not only recommend it if you want a more casual experience, go slap the tracks Deep and Diver into your work playlist. They're really good. Viewers of my channel will probably know by now that I am a bitch for deck builders. It's probably my favorite genre of game, evidenced by my answers to the following questions. What's my favorite game? Library of Ruina. What's your second favorite game? Inscription. And finally, what game do you have the most hours in? Slay the Spire. While this probably isn't that many hours to a lot of you, I hop around games a lot, and almost 500 is kind of insane for me. For a long time, Slay the Spire was at the top of my favorite games list and still holds a spot in the top 5 easily. It involves ascending the Spire, a massive roguelike dungeon with one of four characters, the Iron Chad, who specializes in gaining strength and block, the Soylent, who specializes in long combos and poison, the Defect, who controls orbs with passive abilities and is by far the most fun, and the Watcher, who is bad and stinky and unfun. Maybe I'll do a video on the game at some point since I love it so much, but if you love card games, you'll love Spire. And the soundtrack is eternally ingrained in my memory. It's not an uncommon occurrence for me to begin humming to myself, only to realize 20 minutes later that I'm going through the soundtrack one song at a time. It's that ingrained in my memory, I don't even realize it. Every song is very orchestral, big and bombastic, very mysterious and adventure-y, if that's even a word. Go check out Exordium and The City, they're my favorites, and play the game. It's good, I, I promise. Darkest Dungeon 2 is the sequel to an old favorite of mine, Darkest Dungeon. Who would have thought, right? I actually pre-ordered this game and was pretty happy with it, but it's been getting regular updates and expanding the content for over a year now, so it's probably about time I revisit it. I'll probably do a video on it because I'm a big fan, and I've just gotta talk about the music here first. Shit goes hard, enough said. It's very dark, aggressive, and really, really good. Darkest Dungeon is all about horrific monstrosities being unleashed upon the world and the only people here to take them on are a ragtag group of Team Fortress wannabes. The world is against you, and the music reflects it with loud bass and gritty percussion blasting you every battle, truly reflecting it as a struggle to survive. I definitely recommend the game now that it's fully released, and if you like this rough and brutal style of music, my favorite track is The Sluice, so go check it out.
Dungeon of the Endless holds a really special place in my heart. It's how I started to transition to my current format and comedy, and it's basically the first series that I did that I was actually proud of and did well. Jesus fucking Christ, is it really nine years old? I bought this game just a few months after it was released. Good God, I'm old. Dungeon of the Endless is a tower defense roguelike, and it's super unique. You ascend through multiple floors of the dungeon, collecting resources and characters, then need to pick up a crystal and rush it to the next location as quickly as possible while massive waves of enemies spawn. It's incredibly fun, and I absolutely adore its art style. And the music fucking rules. It's all this super mysterious, alien-sounding music with echoing instruments. Some notes sound like drops of water falling, or voices humming in the background. A lot of the pieces sound almost like lullabies, with a relaxing drone that's broken up by these mysterious, otherworldly tones. It's really fitting for this atmosphere where anything could be behind the next door, and yet it kind of relaxes you along the way. You can sit back and enjoy most of your time until you finally need to move your crystal, and that's when the deep synths kick in, playing a much more hostile but still otherworldly and mysterious tune. My favorite tracks are the main theme, Dungeon of the Endless, as well as an outmodded voice and skulk around. If you like weird instruments and synths, you'll love these tracks, and it should be obvious that I very much care for this game. It really needs some more love, because I think it's severely underrated. And that's it! That's everything that I have for you guys today. I hope I helped expand your playlists a bit, or maybe even got you guys to try a new game. What soundtracks do you adore? Which of mine do you absolutely hate? I'd love to talk about it in the comments below, and if you'll excuse me, I've got Season 2 of Limbus Company to play. I'll see you soon.